What's up, everybody? It's Izzy, and for the 80 millionth time, I'm going to talk about high bar versus low bar squats for powerlifting. And the question that I want to address in today's video is why do some people squat more high bar? The reason why I want to address this is because I get certain people who think that they might be one of those, you know, special individuals who is stronger high bar. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, I would say perhaps 90 to 95% of competitive powerlifters squat low bar, at least raw lifters. And most people are just simply stronger low bar. And there's some competing theories as to why this is the case, but probably the one that makes the most sense and the one that is um, you know, cited the most often is the one put forth by Greg Knuckles, which says that the reason why people can squat more low bar is because it eliminates the quads and the upper back as the limiting factor in the squat. So anyways, let's think of what happens in a squat, right? If a squat's heavy enough, you know, in most people, what's going to happen is that the quads are going to get maxed out at some point. And as you can see from this image on the screen here, when the quads get maxed out, what then happens is that the knees are going to pull back to a point where they're directly over the ankles. And this is to minimize the moment and the torque that the knee extensors have to overcome in order to complete the lift. Of course, in so doing, you actually maximize the amount of um, moment or torque that the hip musculature has to overcome, the hip extensors. But for most people, this ends up being a good trade because their hips are stronger. Now, with front squats and high bar squats, when the quads get maxed out, uh, a, a problem is introduced and that is basically strength in the upper back. So because in a front squat you're holding the bar out in front of you, that creates a moment arm as seen between you know the bar and the thoracic extensors. So the thoracic extensors have to work much harder to keep your chest up. And of course in high bar the same thing happens versus low bar. Because the bar is higher up the back, you have a longer moment arm as seen you know by the back and it requires more strength in the thoracic and, and lumbar extensors to keep your back from rounding and in a high bar squat you know if you get rounded and get forward you're kind of screwed you're not going to be able to finish the lift more times than not now in a low bar squat because the bar sits lower and it sits directly on top of you know the spine of the scapula right about where the thoracic extensors are it minimizes the moment arm um, that's put on the thoracic extensors. So what ends up happening is that when the quads get maxed out, the next uh, limitation point doesn't end up being the upper back. It ends up being the musculature that extends the hips. And so for most people, this allows their strongest lower body point, the posterior chain, to be the limiting factor for their squat versus say it being their quads or their upper back, which tends to be the case in a high bar squat or a front squat. So let's kind of use this information to think about why somebody might actually be stronger high bar or at least why they wouldn't be any stronger low bar. And it's a pretty rare case, but it does happen with specific enough training. And the typical cause of this is somebody who has been an Olympic weightlifter for years. And what happens with an Olympic weightlifter? They basically squat upright only. They don't accept squats with forward lean. Their coaches don't allow it, right? So what ends up happening is that these lifters build a surplus of quad strength through years of training upright high bar squats. And, you know, they've also do tons of Olympic pulling with a flat back that strengthens their back. So you end up having these guys who have trained a certain motor pattern, a certain movement pattern for years and years. They have preferentially trained the strength of their quads and their upper back. And so all of the advantages that low bar might give someone doesn't really matter for them because the weak point in their squat doesn't come down to whether or not they can shift most of the torque to their hip muscles. Whereas that is the limiting factor, you know, for people who don't preferentially train that super upright position for years and years. So, you know, you'll get bodybuilders and Olympic weightlifters more commonly. There's actually some Olympic weightlifters out there who can beltless high bar squat more than they can deadlift. Uh, it's a real thing. And this does not happen by accident. It doesn't happen, you know, strictly through um, anthropometry, through, you know, through segment lengths of your body. It happens through years and years of a very specific type of training. And so sometimes you'll get in powerlifting, powerlifters who just greatly prefer high bar squats. And when you look into it, usually these are people who have high bar squatted for years prior to getting into the sport of powerlifting. And for them, going into a new awkward movement pattern when their quads are not the issue like they typically are for most people, 
ends up just being a net loss when they switch to low bar because it just feels awkward to them. And, you know, this is where you get exceptions like Bryce Lewis and John Hack, guys who have trained high bar for years and tried low bar and just didn't like it. Now, let me explain why I made this video, though. Most of you guys do not fall into this exception category. You have not been doing high bar for years and years. You have not developed um, some sort of surplus of strength in the quads where even when you miss squats, your knees don't pull back. Now, if you are one of those lifters who does not miss squats with their knees pulling back and their quads getting maxed out, you may not really benefit from low bar as much as other people do. However, for those of you guys who, when you do miss squats, you're more bent over than normal, your knees pull back, and your upper back rounds on your high bar squats, I'm talking about on maximal lifts here, you're probably going to be one of those people that squats more low bar. There's a very, very high chance that that is the case. But again, key point here. This does not happen by accident. It's not strictly a morphology thing or, or a body type thing. In my experience, this only happens through years of dedicated quad training through purposely being super upright when you squat. Most of you are still going to end up benefiting from switching to low bar because you just simply haven't put in years and years on your high bar anyway. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day and good luck with your training. Peace.